so this is when we really we're going to jump into the Senate career and start talking about some of the stuff that is, frankly, a lot of it's kind of ugly uh, when you talk about a lot of his Senate record. And when you talk about what is uh, the swamp, what is the thing that he is the guy that we have we just have railed against forever as libertarians, uh, quite frankly, he's he uh, in 74 described himself as liberal on civil rights and liberties, senior citizens' concerns and health care, but conservative on other issues, including abortion and the draft. Uh, he was Catholic, uh, probably still is Catholic. Uh, he met Jill Biden in 77, and they got I think they got married in 78. So uh, a few years after his wife, that's where he met his current wife uh, to kind of close out his personal life stuff. Uh, he became the ranking minority member on the U.S. Senate Committee in 81, and in 93, he voted in favor of a section of a broader federally mandated policy that deemed homosexuality incompatible with the military life, thereby banning gay Americans from serving in the military in any capacity. And in 96, he voted in favor of the Defense of Marriage Act. Uh, Reinhold, what is the Defense of Marriage Act? Because I've heard it in relation to Bob Barr, who ran for the Libertarian Party nomination in 08, who wrote the thing, but I don't quite remember what the Defense of Marriage Act was. It was a federal law that basically states that um, gay marriage wouldn't be accepted in 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 federal jobs. It wouldn't be recognized. So in, in the federal um, government, uh, that they would not be allowed to recognize any union between same-sex marriage. Okay. Uh, so obviously, you know, I mean, most Democrats were kind of in that wheelhouse at that point. Obama, many people forget that Obama, and when he ran into eight, was not for gay marriage, but for civil unions. Hillary Clinton was the same. Uh, Trump, yeah, yeah Doma, Doma was passed underneath uh, Bill Clinton. Uh, yeah, he's a, he's a big proponent for it too. So it was, it wasn't until the Democrats in in twenty twelve trying to, I think, gin up more support, decided to uh, finally embrace the position that the libertarians had had since 72. Right. So, yeah. Um, that, that was something that came out that a lot of people think has always been that way, but it's not, it's fairly recent. Yeah. The first gay man, openly gay man to get a, other than president Baldwin, uh, uh, Buchanan, uh, the first electoral votes was John Hospers. The first libertarian party candidate for president was openly gay. Um, and the first woman to get an electoral was he not openly gay? Am I wrong in that? I don't think he was superly openly gay. I think well, he wasn't closeted, but he wasn't open about it either. Who, who was in 72, for goodness <laughs> sake? Um, it, it, uh, other than... He was, wasn't Horn. going to parades or anything. It's, was it Rip Torn or Rip Taylor? Those I always get them confused, and they're very different. Rip Rip Taylor is the one with the confetti. Rip Torn what? is the one from Men in Black with the... With the, the, the you know, unfortunately passing away recently, but just the best lines in some of the best movies is so great so he, he really uh where uh, his, his senate career anchors on uh chairing the senate committee on the judiciary from 87 to 95 and uh and in the minority um biden sponsored bills primarily in these areas 19 percent of his bills were on government operations and politics 18 percent were on crime and law enforcement 17% were on international affairs, 11% were on armed forces and national security, and 10% on economics and finance. And so that may give us a good idea of where he may look. Again, that was politics, government operations, then crime and law enforcement, international affairs, armed forces and national security, and economics and public finance. Um, he missed 12% of his votes, which is 2% higher than most other senators, um, Senate Foreign Relations Committee, uh, he was a longtime member. He became the ranking minority member in 97 and chaired the committee in uh, 2001 uh, during uh, till 2003. So obviously a very important time. He actually opposed the Gulf War um, on, on grounds that it why well, a lot of people at the time, I mean, you could probably speak to that better. There were actually people who opposed the Gulf War, which I was I was shocked to like grow up and find out because I was just, you know, as a kid in 91. And I'm like, who doesn't love a good war? Well, apparently, Joe Biden was against the Gulf War. Bill Hicks has a great 
a bit about that. And I think uh, Dennis Larry stole a little bit of it, but it was, it was just about how we became just like, it was such, it was such a, a, um, a powerful war in the fact that we won so overwhelmingly, but the people don't remember when, when it first started happening, when we first started discussing maybe going to war, we were hearing Iraq was the fourth largest army and this is going to be a horrible thing. And, you know, mm-hmm. it was it, the uh, people, a lot of people were put in fear over that. And uh, there were people who were really scared that we were going to have, it was going to be a long prolonged either Afghanistan that Russia had just gone through or Vietnam that we had just gone through. Um, and we, nobody wanted that. Right. So it, they were afraid it was going to turn down, turn out to be like what ended up being Afghanistan. Yeah. Um, so, but I remember when Bush senior, um, there, there, he was going to give a speech about whether or not what he was going to do about the invasion of Kuwait that night. And he, uh, famously, you know, there were cameras looking through the window of the Oval Office and there was, he got a phone call, showed him crumpling up a, a piece of paper and then pulling out a pen and started writing. So he got a phone call that he, that this, that changed his mind and made him decide to go and, um, basically kick Saddam out of Kuwait. Hmm. Um, so a lot of people were very patriotic at that point when, when things started happening and it was one of the first really, um, so it wasn't the first televised war as it were, because there was a lot, there was a lot of footage coming out of Vietnam and, and those, those types of, of events. But when we started having a lot of the high tech stuff and CNN had just started, right? So CNN is needing footage and they're talking about the war 24 seven and the government's giving them all this footage of the bombs going down and the cameras going down and everything, you know, and just the luckiest man in the world, which is the guy going across the bridge. I don't know if you remember this or not. Yeah. He was labeled the most, the luckiest man in the world because he was going across the bridge and he just got to the other side when the, when the bridge blew up. Right. Mm. So they had all this great footage and it was like watching a movie. Yeah. And people were just like patriotism and we're going to do this and yay America. And, and uh, they, they not had, realizing like, that we were bombing them back to the Stone Age. It was it was so much devastation in that country. What we were doing to them. We actually there's a great book that about uh, about propaganda where they sent over like a million American flags and handed them all out, and so it looked like the Iraqis uh, or the Kuwaitis and Iraqis were supporting us. And uh, yeah, it's it's some evil shit. Once you start looking into anti uh, pro war propaganda. Um, so you remember Wag the Dog came out because of the war or before the war and was just ironically almost similar. I can't no, remember. No, that was after that was Kosovo. So Wag the Dog was more oh, yeah, like Kosovo. Not Kosovo right. years later. Yeah. I I remember being kind of Bill Clinton, in middle school yeah. when that came out. Um so speaking of Kosovo, in ninety nine during the Kosovo War, Biden supported the NATO bombing of the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia and co sponsored with McCain, the McCain Biden Kosovo resolution resolution, which called on Clinton to use all necessary force including ground troops. Biden was a strong supporter of the 2001 war in Afghanistan. Whatever it takes, we should do it, he said. As head of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Biden said in 2002 that Saddam Hussein was a threat to national security, and there was no option to eliminate that threat, but to eliminate it. In October 2002, he ve- he voted in favor of the U.S. invasion of Iraq, As chair of the Foreign Relations Committee, Biden had enormous influence and argued strongly in favor of the invasion. Now, just days before the vote, Biden said, I do not believe this is a rush to war. I believe it is a march to peace and security. I believe that failure to overwhelmingly support this resolution will likely enhance the prospects that war will occur. Uh, Biden was able, because of his position, to choose all 18 witnesses in the main Senate hearings on Iraq, and he mainly chose people who supported a pro-war position. The restricted test, the restricted testimony that Biden allowed played a major role in the deception of the American people, and his witnesses argued in favor of regime change as the stated U.S. policy. They warned of a nuclear armed Saddam, sometimes this decade and they said Iraqis would welcome the United States as liberators. So we remember all three of those points, don't we, Harry? Like you, you hear that stuff and you go, Oh, yeah. the peace and security regime, regime change is possible. Nuclear armed Saddam is imminent. Mm-hmm. They'll welcome us as liberators. I remember being, you know, we were kids and, or, you know, teen, yeah. teens, college age going, ah, oh, they're right. 
They'll welcome us as liberators. They'll love and, us. Yes, they'll love us. They'll let us put us like McDonald's down there. It'll be great. It'll be great. It'll be like America too, but in the Middle East, it'll be awesome. They'll another be- another instance of American propaganda was, do you remember when Saddam's statue was torn down? If you watch yes. the footage, you'll see it's really tightly shot. And if you were to pull back, it's because they had a perimeter set up that allowed nobody but pro-American protesters into that square to tear down that statue. Uh, so well, that's the thing too is is people think that Bush engineered that going to Iraq thing. And he didn't. I mean, that was something from before him. That was mm-hmm. that was Bush Senior and Clinton. Yes, and, and Clinton and the Democrats for eight years pushing hard line against Iraq because we didn't we didn't invade them we kicked them out of kuwait and stopped right so um, we could have gone in and, and taken it over and they didn't and the idea was that we were supporting them to regime change themselves uh and then bush turned his back on when they tried to do that turned his back on the people there who did uh and they ended up getting gassed and killed but yeah. for for eight years clinton and all the democrats were were fighting and pushing and trying to get Saddam removed from power and even supporting going to war when the election came around in 2000 um, the support for Iraq and and removing Saddam from Iraq was around 68 to 70 percent right so people think that you know this was just something that came out because of 9-11 it was something that was in the works and driving to anyway 9-11 just kind of flipped the switch to say okay we're going to do it yeah right so it, the Democrats pushed for this for eight years, and then they complained about it as, as soon as it happened. And I think I remember hearing during um, right after 9-11 where they were saying that um, somebody said, we'll give we'll give Bush one war. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh, yeah. we'll, we'll give him one. But when he tries to go to another area, that's mm-hmm. when we're going to stand up and fight him. Right. It was all political. It was all calculations. Right. So they said, OK, you can go to Afghanistan. That'll be the good war. Uh, but we don't, you know, we don't want you going anywhere else. And then he said he wanted to go to Iraq and he, he mentioned two other, he, what was it? The axis of evil, mm-hmm. uh, North Korea and, and, um, Iraq and, um, Ohio. What was it? Oh, <laughs> Ohio. <laughs> um, yeah. So he, so he went to Iraq. He, he said, we're going to finish that in Iraq. We're going to take care of this, this issue. And, um, they said they were going to go say, no, we're not going to let you do it. And, it just shows the duplicity that the Democratic Party have and people like uh, the the blue dog Democrats and the, mm-hmm. and the uh, Joe Bidens that they are not that much different than the neocons were when foreign policy came came around the town. No, I think people who are younger especially don't realize the whatever propaganda you think goes on around Trump or Antifa or whatever. Now it's just not even close. Like there's, there's so much more information now that Mm -hmm. it it is so much. I mean, and you tell me if you agree or disagree, Harry, like that period, everybody in the government was so lockstep and the media was so lockstep with the government in going to war with Iraq, that there was no room for any other, opinion and you were canceled aggressively look up the dixie chicks incident if you don't know what happened to the dixie chicks you know the the thing about the the censor type people it's just the chicks now the chicks it's chicks. it's just the chicks right the thing about people that that will use censorship is that they get they get they they allow it by getting hung up on something else and so like the dixie chicks went to a concert uh, overseas, I think it was Germany, and denounced the war with Bush and in 2003-ish. Maybe it's 2005. I don't know when, but uh, they... It, everybody was pissed. And I said this too because I was a good neocon back then. It's not that I disagree with their right to say it. It's that why would you go and say it overseas? You know, it's sort of like... It's not that I disagree with Joe Jorgensen saying that people should be anti-racist. It's that she said the word must. It's mm-hmm. not that I disagree with the removing Confederate statues, but why do it right now? You know, there's always that, like, just that say I, what you want yeah, to say not, instead of, like, 
So I wanted to say the Dixie Chicks shouldn't be anti-American and anti-war, and I'm mad about it, and uh, because that was unpopular to be that direct about it. But that's what I was saying. Oh, it's man. not that you were saying you were saying uh, I'm I'm all for people defending themselves and and carrying weapons to protest, but you know, don't approach a car if you do that. Right. You get what you, you get what you deserve. Yeah. Then. Yeah, we've got libertarians mad about jaywalking. If you jaywalk, you violated someone's nap, and you deserve to get killed. It's 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 just bizarre and insane. And yeah. uh, well, I think back it, then, though, it was it was easier to tightly control the narrative. Yes. Now it becomes a lot harder. Right? Yeah. With, with independent journalism and cell phones and everything else, it's really hard to lie to the American people and get away with it as easily as they did. It takes a lot more work and effort to do now. Go ahead, Harry. Sorry, we just um, kept it on him. I think right, right, right. Hole. It's actually to me, it was um, that was government cancellation and that was government control when they had a lot of gatekeeping. To th that was easy then. Now mm -hmm. it's a little bit more difficult. But the biggest difference is is that the which which we, we call fake news is more of, of them citing themselves it's the same way that UFO and all those conspiracy theorists will have done for years is that they will cite their sources, which is their own books from like two years ago. It's the exact same way a lot of these people are creating a lot of this propaganda now is they all cite each other's articles. So one incident will get cited five different times in a game of telephone and go back to the exact same thing. And with all these different websites, stuff like that, it's just that's where a lot of the quote unquote fake news is coming from like that and the worst part about it is that you can get things you can get people that are news guard verified and have all, all check parts of new guard doing the exact same thing like that um back then yeah it was uh, uh, it was it was harder for uh it, which at the time was actually more truer independent media sites of people out there going like, Hey, I saw this. This is what I saw on the ground reporting, like the stuff we got during Occupy Wall Street, where people just went down to Occupy with a camera and was recording everything. And so, and reporting back online of what they're seeing. Um, I think that more organic type of independent journalism is, is barely here anymore. That has mostly been standard, uh, uh, sanitized and this fake televised revolution is what we're getting now. And, and well, that's a big problem with the, the big tech censorship is that when you want to go and look five years ago, if you wanted to look up information, you could find a Ford Fisher news to share video on YouTube platform. But if you look up something now, you see, you know, ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, you know, and those are the very people that lied to us about Iraq. There's right. those are the ones who lied, who bought hook, line and sinker, everything that, Joe Biden was pushing back then Correct. everything that Colin Powell, who yes. you know, comes out and, and talk, trashes Donald Trump. It's like Donald Trump is right about uh, Iraq. Like he actually nailed that one now, you know, for whatever that one's worth. But, <laughs> you know, Joe Biden lied to the American people about Iraq. He lied to the American people. He's been wrong on. I think it was maybe Rand Paul who said he's been wrong on every major foreign policy point his entire career. What has he been right about? And he's exactly right. He's wrong on foreign policy every single time. When you look at the track record of the things he supported, he was wrong on it. And once we get to crime, uh, I'll move on to the, the crime stuff now, if you guys are okay with that. Yeah. He was wrong on all this, too. <laughs> so uh, is that Gunther screaming in the background? Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, no, that's okay. It's cute. Uh, I plan to have many screaming children in the back of my podcast this Sunday, too. Um, 